finding probabilities using a normal distribution um, is not very difficult, especially with technology these days. Um, the first thing you want to do on every problem, as always, is state what random variable it is. So as a reminder, random variables are what we're measuring. So in this case, we're talking about a kitten's weight. Um, a 10-week-old kitten should weigh on average 24.5 ounces with a standard deviation of 2.52 ounces. Um, and we are going to assume that the random variable has a distribution that is normally, approximately normally distributed. So, um, in this case, we are looking at the weight of a 10-week-old, healthy 10-week-old. old kitten. Um, in order to do a normal distribution, you need to know what the mean and standard deviation are. Um, remember the symbol for mean is mu. So the mean in this case is average and mean are basically the same thing. Mean is just a type of average. So since we're told the average is 24.5 ounces, then we know that that's my mean. And we're told the standard deviation is 5.25 ounces, which the symbol for that is sigma. So 5.25 ounces. Um, in this problem, we would like to find the probability that a healthy 10-week-old kitten weighs less than 14 ounces. So again, you want, um, with every probability problem, you want to rewrite this in a statement. Um, X is the weight of a 10-week-old kitten and less than 14 ounces would look like this. The lesson symbol. Um, with most normal distributions, it's very useful to go ahead and draw a picture. Um, the center of a normal distribution is the mean. So the center is 24.5. This is the x-axis, so this does represent weights. And then if we're looking at 14, 14 is below 24, so 14 would be down here, and if we're less than, then we're looking at that shading there. Again, we will use technology. Um, if you're using a TI-83 calc TI or 84 calculator, um, or TI Inspire, or TI-89 Titanium, then you would use um, the distribution, the distro menu, and the normal CDF. So here we would type in normal CDF in the distro menu, and then your lower limit, where does the shading start? Well, it actually starts way down there at negative infinity because this just keeps going forever. On most calculators, you put in negative infinity as negative 1 E99. Your upper limit would be 14. Then you put in your mean, which is 24.5, and your standard deviation of 5.25. Commas are on your calculator, so you do want to use all of those. And once you type all that into your calculator, you will then get a probability distribution, or probability value, I should say, of 0 0.0228, rounded to four decimal places. So that's the probability that a healthy kitten weighs less than 14 ounces. Let's do another example. Um, let's look at the probability that a healthy kitten weighs more than 33 ounces. So again, we write this in a probability statement. Probably that X, which is the weight, is more than 33 ounces. So again, pictures are very useful here, so we'll draw a picture. The mean, again, was 24.5. And our upper limit is 33. And we are going above, so we're going to shade up here. Again, this is the x-axis. Again, using normal CDF. Then your shading actually in this case starts at 33 and ends at infinity. So again, you put 1E99 for infinity, just a really big number. Your mean was 24.5 and your standard deviation was 5.5. Two, five. And now you type that into your calculator.
And so we start off with the 33, then the, um, the 1E99, and then the mean of 24.5, and the standard deviation of 5.25. And there we get a probability of 0 0.0527. Um, the next problem asks us to find the probability that a healthy kitten weighs between 14 and 33 ounces. So again, we're going to draw a picture of this, and we're also going to write this in um, notation. So in mathematical notation, if we're between, then 14 is our lower limit, x is between these two values, and it would look something like this. So 14 is below. 33 is above, and you're shading in between because you want to be between those two. Again, if you're using the TI calculator, you would do normal CDF. Your lower limit where your shading starts is at 14. Your upper limit where it ends is at 33. Your mean again is 24.5, and your standard deviation is 5.25. And now we go back into our calculator. We ask our calculator for that information. Um, you put in your lower limit, your upper limit, your mean, and your standard deviation of 5.25. And we find out that that's equal to 0.9245. So what that actually means is that 92% of all kittens weigh between 14 and 33 ounces. And then the last question is actually going the other way. This one is asking us to find out what weight is in the bottom 10%. So we want to find out that cutoff point that talks about a cat being undernourished. If they're in the bottom 10%, they're considered undernourished. You can draw a picture of this, but sometimes that's hard to look at. Um, I like to look at what is the area to the left, the left of my value. Um, we're looking for an x value because we're looking for a weight. And that area is 10% because we're talking about bottom. If that was top, then you'd have to subtract this from 1 to get what the area is to the left. Once you know this, you can again, using the TI calculator, use inverse norm. And here you put in your probability, your area to the left. You always need the area to the left when you're doing any inverse normals. Then you put in your mean of 24.5 and your standard deviation of 5.25. So again, we'll go to our calculators, pull that information up on our calculator. Um, And we come up with 17 point, point 0.8, roughly, and that was in ounces, so don't forget your units. Um, if you have some other technology you use, it's very similar to this one, so you just have to look at the different technologies that you're working with to see how to go about doing it. And that's all there is to doing normal probabilities.